All right, so Tesla's Q4 earnings call just happened, but a few hours before that, Tesla gave us all of this new information about the Model Y, pretty much everything we were asking for. According to Tesla's Q4 report, Model Y production ramp actually started in January. Haha, <laughs> we knew it. Their official quote from the report said, the ramp of Model Y will be gradual as we will be adding additional machinery in various production shops. After such expansions are done by mid-2020, installed combined Model 3 and Model Y capacity should reach 500,000 units per year. We will start delivering Model Y vehicles by the end of Q1 2020. March. I knew it. So if you saw my last video or any of my previous videos, you know that we were waiting for a lot of details about the Model Y and we pretty much got all of them. Not all directly from the earnings call itself, but from that report and then also just the updated website. So we got the final range, we got the delivery time, we got all the info about those wheels we've seen everywhere and how they're actually coming to the Model Y. We got the performance specs and much more. And now the order fee is actually $100 instead of the $2,500 pre-order fee. So it's in line with the rest of Tesla's vehicles. So first up is the delivery time. We saw in that report that they said Q1 2020 and now their website officially says, quote, first deliveries begin in March 2020. So I'm very excited about this because one, that means I'm getting my Model Y soon. And then two, that means I was right in all of these videos. A lot of people were commenting saying like you're speculating and stuff which I kind of was based on rumors, but I tried to be very clear about that, that it was just speculation and it might not come true, but it did come true, so I was right. And Tesla's Canadian website now says deliveries will begin in Canada in mid 2020, and then Shanghai production is supposed to start in 2021. So all of that evidence that pointed to February, March, or April is coming true. One additional thing I wanna add after listening to the call itself is that they were specific that limited quantities are gonna be delivered in March and then ramping up from there, which is what we expected, but just keep that in mind. Don't expect if you pre-ordered in November that you're getting yours in March. You know, it might happen. We don't know how many pre-orders there are, but we'll see and it, expect a little bit of a delay there. Next up, the range of the Model Y has increased drastically since the announcement, and I'm so excited about this. But first, before I get into that, make sure you hit that like button. So you'll notice on the website that the rear wheel drive long range is no longer an option. It's just now the all wheel drive and then the performance, and then it specifies that the standard range is gonna start production in early 2021. So previously they had stated that the rear wheel drive long range was 300 miles of range and that the all wheel drive long range was 280 miles of range. In kilometers, the rear wheel drive was supposed to be 483 kilometers of range, and then the all wheel drive was supposed to be 451 kilometers of range. But now the long range all wheel drive shows a range of 315 miles or 507 kilometers. So that's only seven miles less than the Model 3, and I'm so excited about that. Tesla said, quote, due to continued engineering progress of the Model Y all wheel drive, we have been able to increase its maximum EPA range to 315 miles compared to our previous estimate of 280 miles. This extends Model Y's lead as the most energy efficient electric SUV in the world. So if you had previously ordered an all wheel drive long range, you were counting on 280 miles of range, and that's what I was counting on, or 451 kilometers of range. And now I'm getting 315 miles of range, 35 more miles of range, or in kilometers, 56 more kilometers of range. Amazing. I kind of suspected this would happen and I talked about it in other videos, but I was being conservative and saying 290 or 300. I can't believe that I'm getting 35 more miles of range. I would have never expected it to be that much. So I just finished actually listening to the earnings call itself and Elon pointed out that the Model Y is achieving an efficiency of 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour, which is absolutely incredible when you compare it to other crossovers or SUVs in its class. It's definitely smaller than the average crossover and definitely smaller than the average SUV, but still amazing with that 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour. It's really great. So I'm not sure exactly what this means. If you pre-ordered a rear wheel drive, is Tesla just gonna fulfill that order and then stop producing after they got all those pre-orders out of the way? Or are they gonna force people to upgrade or downgrade? It would be a little unfortunate if you were forced to pay $4,000 more or actually $4,990 more because the prices went up. You'll notice that the price of the all wheel drive long range went up from $52,000 to $52,990. And then the performance actually decreased 
by $10. So good news, you can now save $10 on that $61,000 car. It's now $60,990. So thank you to all you commenters who helped me decide to switch to all-wheel drive. I really appreciate it because I would be in this kind of awkward limbo with the rear wheel drive where I'd be like, are they actually gonna produce it or what's gonna happen? And then on top of that, now I'm getting the all wheel drive features on top of this great range of 315 miles. Up next, the paint options are exactly the same and exactly the same prices, but the wheel options have completely changed, completely different wheels. And it turns out all those wheels we saw out in the wild testing are coming to production. The standard wheels on the Model Y are now the 19 inch Gemini wheels. And then if you pay an extra $2,000, you get the 20 inch induction wheels. So we've seen both of these on the road with all Model Ys, and I don't think we ever really saw a Model Y testing out in the wild with those aero wheels. And I'm kind of glad that those aren't coming to production. These new ones look way better in my opinion. And then the wheel options for the performance are a little different. If you get the performance as is, you'll get those induction wheels. But if you get the optional performance upgrade package, which is optional and free, you're gonna get the 21 inch wheels. Basically, I think they made this an option because you can get the performance of the 3.5 second zero to 60 or 3.7 second zero to 100 kilometers with the performance as is, but if you wanna add all that extra equipment, it's gonna decrease the range. So if you add the performance package, your range actually goes down to 280, that original 280, which is down 35 miles. But in turn, you're gonna receive a top speed that's 10 miles per hour more at 155 miles per hour instead of 145 miles per hour. Not sure exactly when you would need that. And then you'll get the 21 inch Uber turbine wheels. You'll also get the performance brakes, the lowered suspension, and the aluminum alloy pedals. In kilometers, the standard performance version is gonna get you the same 3.7 second, zero to 100 kilometers per hour. And then you'll get a top speed of 233 kilometers per hour and a range of 507 kilometers. But if you decide to do the performance upgrade, your range is gonna decrease down to 451 kilometers. But then you get all the performance features and your top speed goes up to 250 kilometers per hour. Again, not sure when you would need that. I think it's interesting that Tesla's making this optional because for some people, the most important thing about that performance is gonna be the zero to 60 or the zero to 100 kilometers. So they still have the option to get that, but then get the great range. The interior options have stayed the same. Black is included and white is $1,000 more. And then it says officially still that the 7C interior is coming in 2021. Unfortunately, the full self-driving page now says coming later this year in regards to recognizing and responding to traffic lights and stop signs and driving on city streets. So previously, it didn't say coming later this year, so I was hoping that would be out when Model Y releases, but it looks like they probably beat the release date and the software isn't quite ready yet. So the latest update we got on full self-driving was from Elon himself on the call, and he said maybe a couple months away. It did seem like he was kind of pulling out that number, thinking about it, thinking, sure, probably a couple months away, because, you know, the previous target was the end of last year, and he said they're very close. They're very close to feature complete, which means it at least has a chance to get you home to work and back. So unfortunately, not an official release date. I was hoping that they would announce a timeline of an actual release or actually release it at the event, but that didn't happen. It seems like a couple months off, which is still exciting. So other than that, we're still waiting to hear on the official safety ratings for the Model Y. On the Model Y website, it says, quote, like every Tesla, Model Y is designed to be the safest vehicle in its class. The low center of gravity, rigid body structure, and large crumple zones provide unparalleled protection. So probably five stars. I mean, it's so similar to the Model 3, which has five stars. It would make sense. But we're still waiting on those official ratings. So I'm super excited about this new information about the Model Y. And basically all the rumors came true, except for people running with the idea that the Canadian deliveries would happen first. The liftgate is also confirmed on the website. But overall, I'm just excited that a car that I expected to get late 2020 to have 280 miles is coming six to nine months sooner and then it's also got 315 miles of range. Again, in kilometers, that's 507 kilometers up from the original 451. It still remains to be seen how Tesla's gonna treat the rear wheel drive orders because that has now disappeared from the website. So if you pre-ordered, are you gonna have to downgrade to the standard range or upgrade to the all wheel drive? Or are they just gonna fulfill those pre-orders and then stop making the rear wheel drive? That's what I hope that they do. 
Real quick, we have two more quotes from Elon at the event that gave us some insight into the Model Y. He said, quote, when people do a teardown of the Model Y, I think they'll be impressed by some of the things they see. So I think he's talking about that it's very different from the Model 3. There's a lot of advances in the actual design of it. And then someone else from Tesla acknowledged the fact that the Model Y is supposed to be 10% different from the Model 3. So a lot of people think, oh, it's just a bigger Model 3. But he said, quote, the Model Y isn't just a 10% different car. There's a lot of change happening from the customer's perspective. So he's pointing out from a production perspective, sure, 10% difference. And that's why it's so easy for us to produce it. But from a customer's perspective, it's going to be a totally different experience, way more than 10% different than the Model 3. So I'm excited about that. In any case, great updates from Tesla about the Model Y today, and we're a little over a month from when we should see first deliveries. Again, probably the performance version first, and then the all-wheel drive, and then we'll see what comes out from there. So hopefully I'll get mine in like April or maybe May to be conservative because I don't want to get too excited, but I'll keep you guys posted on the entire process. So make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be making a lot of videos about the whole process. And then when I actually get the car, tons of videos in the car itself. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one.